If the star is massive enough, it will continue this collapse, creating a black hole, where the warping of space-time is so great that nothing can escape, not even light. Everything begins with the brilliant minds that first envisioned the existence of black holes. In the year 1915, one of the most famous scientific theories of the present time was published in the German language. Its name was the General Theory of Relativity, and it was published by Albert Einstein. This theory laid the groundwork for the idea that something like a black hole could exist. Paradoxically, Albert Einstein believed that their existence was impossible. However, it was Carl Schwarzschild who first described a mathematical solution representing a black hole. In 1939, the renowned physicist and also the father of the atomic bomb, J. Robert Oppenheimer, embarked on a project together with his student that described the theory of black holes in the context of modern science. Fast forward to the 1960s, and scientists like John Archibald Wheeler coined the term black hole. They were intrigued by the idea that a region of space could be so dense that nothing, not even light, could escape its gravitational pull. Today, we will talk about what black holes actually are, how they form, what happens when we fall into them, and what secrets they might conceal. Now let's discuss a monumental achievement in astrophysics. The first photograph of a black hole. The name of the black hole is Sagittarius A. In April 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration released an image of the supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy, M87. This groundbreaking image provided visual evidence of the Event Horizon, the boundary beyond which nothing can escape a black hole's grasp. But how are black holes formed? Picture a massive star reaching the end of its life cycle. As nuclear fusion ceases, the star's core collapses under its own gravity. If the core is massive enough, it can form a black hole. This process occurs under intense conditions. The star's outer layers are violently expelled in a supernova explosion, leaving behind a core that collapses into an infinitely dense point, known as a singularity. For a star to directly collapse into a black hole without a significant explosion, it's estimated that the initial mass would need to be roughly 20 times that of the Sun, or greater. This is known as the tolman oppenheimer volkoff limit, which is the maximum mass that a non-rotating neutron star can have before it collapses further into a black hole due to its own gravity. Stars with masses in the range of about 2 to 20 times that of the Sun may end up as neutron stars or black holes, depending on various factors including their mass loss during their evolution and their rotation rates. Stars with masses lower than about two times that of the Sun usually don't have enough mass to form black holes, and they might end their lives as white dwarfs. You might be wondering, if black holes are so intriguing, why can't we see them directly? The answer lies in their voracious gravitational pull, Black holes don't emit light, and they distort the path of light passing nearby, making them invisible to conventional telescopes. We can only detect their presence through their gravitational effects on surrounding matter. Ah, the captivating ring around a black hole. This phenomenon, seen in the Sagittarius A image, is actually a result of gravitational lensing, the extreme gravity of the black hole bends and magnifies light from the surrounding accretion disk, creating the stunning appearance of a ring. Black holes come in various sizes, classified by their mass. Stellar mass black holes are several times the mass of our Sun, while supermassive black holes can be millions to billions of times more massive. At their core lies the singularity, a point of infinite density where the laws of physics break down. The largest known black hole is Tun 618, which is 66 billion times bigger than our Sun. 
Imagine falling into a black hole, a concept that defies our understanding of space and time. As you approach a black hole, the gravitational pull becomes stronger and stronger. This phenomenon is often described as tidal forces. These tidal forces stretch your body along the direction of gravity and compress it perpendicular to that direction. This effect is known as spaghettification or the noodle effect. In essence, the gravitational difference between your head and your feet becomes so extreme that you would be stretched out into a long, thin shape. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, time passes more slowly in stronger gravitational fields. This means that as you get closer to the black hole, time would appear to pass more slowly for you compared to an observer farther away from the black hole. This effect is known as time dilation. From your perspective, you might experience time normally, but outside observers would see your time progressing more slowly the closer you get to the black hole. The event horizon is the boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape the black hole's gravitational pull. Once you cross the event horizon, you would be inside the black hole's gravitational influence, and there would be no way to return. From the perspective of outside observers, your image would appear to freeze at the event horizon due to the extreme time dilation. What happens inside a black hole is one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. Our current understanding breaks down at the singularity. Some theories suggest that a path to new physics lies within, perhaps even connecting to other dimensions. Once you fall into a black hole, you can never come out. Or can you? The theoretical concept of wormholes suggests that instead of a singularity inside black holes, there could be a gateway to another part of the universe, where we would emerge from a so-called white hole, which is the exact opposite of a black hole. Things are rushing out of it instead of falling inside. Now, the question arises, are black holes eternal? Will they disappear at some point? The answer is yes. Even black holes will evaporate over a long period of time. Hawking radiation is a theoretical prediction in the field of theoretical physics, specifically in the realm of black hole thermodynamics. It was proposed by physicist Stephen Hawking in 1974. According to this theory, black holes are not completely black and can emit a form of radiation. In quantum mechanics, pairs of virtual particles can spontaneously appear near the event horizon of a black hole. One of these particles falls into the black hole, while the other escapes into space. This process is known as particle-antiparticle pair production. Normally, these virtual particles annihilate each other quickly and do not have a significant effect on the surroundings. However, when this happens near the event horizon of a black hole, if one of the particles falls inside while the other escapes, it appears as though the black hole is emitting radiation. This radiation is now known as Hawking radiation. Over an incredibly long period of time, this process can lead to a black hole losing energy and, theoretically, eventually evaporating completely. This process is more significant for smaller black holes, as larger black holes emit less radiation due to their lower curvature at the event horizon. As we wrap up this journey, Remember that black holes represent the edge of our knowledge and the frontier of exploration. Their mysteries continue to inspire us to push the boundaries of our understanding of the cosmos. Thank you for joining us on this awe-inspiring adventure into the heart of darkness, the incredible world of black holes. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-bending explorations of the universe. Until next time, Keep looking up.